everyone, I'm Molly here with Rosity RV of Michigan and today we're going to show you how to winterize a travel trailer. Now, the winterization idea is going to be a, the same across the board, however, the items and the order of which you do it can be different based on every unit. Every RV is going to have a water pump and a water heater in a different location. We can't tell you where those are going to be located. In fact, we don't even know where they're located until the customer brings them in um, and we do it by sound. I'm going to show you how to do that here in this video. Um, but let's get started on the way we start. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, um, I'm gonna drain the fresh water tank. So this fresh water tank doesn't have any water in it because I had already drained it, but the handle for that is here. So the first thing is you're gonna wanna find that. Drain your water tank, that's gonna be first. Even if you don't think you ever put any water in it, drain, make sure, take the caps off, pull the valves, whatever you need to do, make sure there's no water in there, even if you haven't put water in there. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here. This is where the low point drains are. Um, mostly every coach I've ever seen has these. I can't say all of them because there are some out there that don't have them. Um, but this is gonna be the lowest spot for our plumbing. So I'm gonna drain these or open them up per se. And I'm gonna let whatever water in there drain out that I can. And the reason I do that is so that way that water doesn't instantly start mixing with my antifreeze. Um, and that antifreeze will not get to these low points if they are not open first. So I'm going to open those, open that fresh water. Second thing I'm going to do is come over here to our water heater. Now you might ask yourself, what does my water heater look like? The majority of them look like this. And I say majority because there are multiple different kinds of water heaters. This has a Suburban, this is an inch and an eighth or inch and a sixteenth, I believe, socket. Sixteenth, I believe, yep. So I'm gonna drain this down, let that water come out of there, and then we're gonna go inside. We use our own checklist for this. That's something I highly advise you, if you're doing this at home, to do. Figure out the process and then make a checklist for yourself so you can just revert back to that every year. Because This is something you only do once a year, so it's not something that's common knowledge at the top of your head all the time because you don't do it often enough. And this job always gets you a little wet. So I usually tell people to have towels nearby. Now, as you see this water come out of here, we are near a gypsum quarry here in the Tawas area. And with that being said, you can see all that water coming out of there. It's very normal to have sediment come out of your water heater. Um, unfortunately, in areas of Michigan and, and really all over, there's minerals in the water and that will get in there. So draining your water heater, um, often if it gets a lot of use is never a bad idea. Okay, now we're gonna go check. Um, I know because this one is ours, um, this is our rental unit. So I know this does not have a water filtration system. A lot of units or a lot of RVs do. So definitely make sure you're checking for that because if you do not take off the water filter and dump it, you will have water, residual water stay in there and it will crack every single time. It's a common replacement part we see in the spring. Um, and it just, the antifreeze won't get in there and it'll dilute it. And it can actually add water to the rest of your plumbing lines and give you other problems in your fixtures. So check for a water filter. We don't have one on this. I know that because I've winterized this one many of times, um, but that's definitely the next step we're gonna do. Then after that, which we're not gonna find a water filter, we're gonna go um, switch the valves on the water heater as soon as this is done draining. Okay, so monitor panels located here. You're gonna wanna find your water pump switch. This is how I find a water pump in an RV, a new RV or a different RV that I've never winterized before. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hit that switch. Then I'm gonna hear it. And I can hear it right underneath it here. So I would open these drawers, take a look if you can, look under there. Now, because I've been doing this a little while, I know that these false walls or where they had things like this. So the water pump is going to be beyond here. That is the only secret to finding your water pump. Um, you literally have to turn it on and listen to it. There's no other way to really know. 
new RVs are starting to come with schematics. That's never been a thing in our 20 year existence um, until now. So you, if you're lucky enough to get a schematic and it be right, it can tell you where the water pump is, but that's not generally the case. So I'm gonna go grab a screw gun. I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna check out the water pump. Okay. Now that we have our square bit, now in the RV industry, the number two square bit is the most common screw. Um, so if you don't have one of those and you're an RVer, highly suggest it. So I'm gonna take our number two bit here. We're gonna take this little panel off, which is always fun. So back here, this is our um, fresh water tank actually goes right down here. That fill is outside and that goes right there. Okay, now that we have our um, panel off there, we can see the water pump. So you see that water pump located right there? So what I'm going to do is check to see if this has a winterization valve. This one does. That's this little handy hose right here. Okay, that goes right to this valve. And on this valve, all we have to do is turn that valve and it'll direct the water pump from drawing out of here, which is our fresh water tank, and it will now draw out of here, which is where we can drop this in the antifreeze jug and it'll draw antifreeze through the entire coach. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so we have this I brought in here just in case, because I couldn't remember if this has the hookup for the antifreeze. So this one does, so like I showed you, I just turned that valve and it's gonna draw out of here. If you do not have that, and on the older ones, chances are you're not going to have that. What I would do is take the inlet side of the pump off, like I mentioned before, where it's drying out of here, the freshwater tank. You're going to take that off. You're going to hook this directly up to that, then drop this one into the jug. But this one has the diverter, so we're just going to take that, turn that valve where I showed you, and then I'm going to drop this into the jug. Now, we'll always have some water that comes out of here. So I always have extra towels on hand probably didn't see but the water came out of here so I'm gonna put this right into here now that that's ready and my low point drains are done draining because if I turn this on right now without closing those low point drains all that antifreeze is gonna dump out low point drain so I'm gonna go close the low point drains then before I turn the water pump on I'm going to bypass the water heater that's our next step so let me do that so our low point drains are done draining so here I am closing them and they're always going to have a little water in there, but that's okay. That's the way it goes. When it comes to finding your water heater valves on the inside, you need to first find the water heater on the outside, which we did. It's in the rear bottom section of the coach somewhere. That's a normal position. Um, so now I know where it is in relation to the coach, the bottom rear. That's where I'm going to go look for a false panel. Yep. Okay. So. We know that the water heater was in the back of the unit at the bottom. I looked under here, you can see the box that it's actually in. I'm gonna take this off right here with a couple of screws and then we're gonna get access to those water heater valves. So if you look back in here, down in here, you can see the valves. Just cut to the valves on the, on the video. <laughs> now, if you're not tall enough to reach down through here, which I'm not, you can take these off and this whole box will move and you can get to those valves from there. So that's the water heater access. So before we start to draw antifreeze, there's a couple things I wanna go over that this coach does not have, but you might run into. Um, residential refrigerators, this is a 12 volt, this is not a residential, but a lot of residential refrigerators, which you'll see in motor coaches and big fifth wheels and stuff, they have water filtration in them as well, which you're gonna to wanna to take out. They also have ice makers. So you're gonna to wanna to cycle those fridges and get that ice maker winterized. That's a big one people forget. And then also on our um, washer dryer units, if you have a washer, it needs to be cycled through with antifreeze as you would in a home, um, which is not common for most people because they don't winterize their home. But if you did, same thing. You're going to want to put antifreeze to both of those. So look for those um, before we do this. So this one doesn't have that, so I'm going to go start to draw the antifreeze through the coach. So I bypassed. We turn the pump, I'm gonna hit this, and it's gonna instantly start to draw. 
So now as that water pump is on, it's now going to draw this antifreeze through until the pump is satisfied, which it is right now. So as soon as I turn these on, so I'm going to go hot. You're going to get air line in the lines when you do this because we had drained it down. Now we're starting to get pink. But you want to make sure you run these for 10, 20 seconds before you're done to make sure you're getting all that water out and all that antifreeze through. So now I'm going to rotate over to the cold side here. And it's going to run pink for a little while. As it has. Now, we ran out of antifreeze. Common question we get. How many... How much antifreeze do I need? For a trailer like this, I always tell people to have three gallons on hand. So super small trailer, you can get away with, with one or two. Um, bigger trailers, you might even need four, maybe even five, if you have any of those amenities like I mentioned. So antifreeze jug is out. So I did the sink, we got good pink coming through here. Air pressure is weak as it starts to draw again. So good and pink there. Now I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Good and pink there. Good and pink there. Don't forget your toilet. That's a big one everyone forgets. Now I always like to leave a little bit of pink so we can verify that it has been done. Not necessary for the homeowner. You're not going to forget because you're not doing a whole bunch of them. So there's our shower. One one mistake I've I've seen people make is that they don't get antifreeze through the shower hose line itself. Um, sometimes if it has a bath fixture, like in um, some units, they'll just have a bath fixture. They won't think to draw it through here. So don't forget about that. So we're almost done. We went through two jugs. Two and a half is usually the number that I say you need, but unfortunately you can't buy a half gallon. So you need three gallons. Okay, so to finish this off, I do not like to put the drain plug. Um, this anode rod is also a drain plug. I don't like to put this back in once I'm winterized because then I know that it has been done. So that's going to be the end of our winterization video. Hopefully that helped you if you're looking to do this on your own. Um, we do offer a description sheet in store so if you need that um, or if you need us to email that we can do that as well that just kind of gives you a checklist so you can do this at home like i said every rv is going to be different but it's the same general purpose um, to make sure you get all those water amenities antifree with antifreeze in them so that's going to be that if you like this video please like and subscribe to see more like it